good evening, good evening, good evening. I want to jump right in. It's been a while since I've been able to read about what was it? Um, Robert K. A. Gardner. Robert K. A. Gardner, Race and and Color in International Relations. So we're going to jump right in. The last time I was reading it, it was leaving off getting into talking about Roosevelt, the then president. I don't add to or take from the author. So, let's get started. I'll turn this music down. This is Kim. I don't know the right for this music. I'll let it play a little bit. It says, by the time that Roosevelt spoke, the United States had become a Pacific power. In its annexation of the Philippines and Guam at the end of the 19th century was perhaps a turning point. In 1899, when American Secretary of State John Hay issued his famous Open Door Declaration on Western Dealings with China, he was announcing to the European powers who had been proceeding on the assumption that they could carve up Asia among themselves as they had carved up Africa. That Asia was indeed a very different situation. American interest in China and in the Far East in general had now become a vital element in the world power equation. This left no room for the European technique of extending the balance of power game beyond Europe as had been done by the partition of Africa. Just as the emergence of the United States, Russia and Japan as Pacific world powers ended the long period of Europe's unquestioned dominance in world affairs and transformed the character of international politics so to the American entry into World War I and the Russian Revolution introduced the beginnings of a new pattern. The United States and Russia had been on the periphery of the international power struggle. They now appeared at the center, armed moreover with the beginnings of universal ideologies that were essentially revolutionary in character. With their ideology of the self-determination of peoples, Wilson's 14 points, says K.M. Panikar, were acclaimed as a doctrine of liberation in Asia. On the other hand, imperialism meant something totally different after Lenin's definition of it as the last phase of capitalism and his insistence Uh, and, his, and his insistence that the liberation of subject people from colonial domination was a part of the struggle against capitalism. While the European Civil War of 1914 to 1918 was destroying, was destroying both Western solidarity and Europe's image outside the West, the peoples who had for so long been the victims of Western dominance were being offered new concepts of their own rights. In the year 1919, along the 4th of May movement arose in China, the, the Destour Party was born in Tunisia, and the first Pan-African Congress was held in Paris. By 1919, the, the nationalist movement in Indonesian 
in Indonesia had expanded to an organization of some two and a half million people calling for complete independence from the Dutch. So I am going to leave it right there. And the next time we will be getting into, it'll start, it'll talk about the covenant of the League of Nations. This is Race and Color in International Relations by Robert K.A. Gardner with Trisha. And I will see you next time. Have a blacktastic evening. Peace, love, and black power.